Good evening, everybody. It's really nice to see you here. Uh, I see lots of familiar faces and many more unfamiliar faces. So that means there are new people here who are here to hear about, <laughs> here to hear different spellings about the Lord Jesus and what he can do in your life. He's done so much for me. And tonight, I'm so happy to stand here in front of you and share some of the wonderful miracles he has worked in my life. I'm here to tell you about all those miracles. Well, I don't think I can cover all of them because if I really have to tell you about all of them, I might spend more than a week you might, you might even wonder why I'm saying this, because this is true. He's worked so many, many miracles in my life. Uh, and as I said, I've been blessed with healing miracles, financial miracles, miracles in near-death situations, and even miracles in little areas, which may even seem small. But of course, miracles are never small. Yes, miracles are never small. So he's worked so many miracles in my life. Let me begin with the most recent miracle that Jesus worked in my life. Well, just about four weeks ago, at the end of last month really, uh, it was around 11 at night, and I had this excruciating pain on the left side of my stomach, accompanied by vomiting. Well, I was familiar with these symptoms because I had experienced this some years ago. And at that time, I was miraculously healed. I knew the serious implications of these symptoms. And I said, Jesus, you healed me of this once, but why is it back again? That was the question I had for Jesus. But I prayed because I knew that he was the only one who could heal me. I have a very close family, and uh, my sisters who lived in the neighborhood, they rushed, to me, rushed me to the emergency section of uh, the Atlanta hospital. Although by then, the pain had subsided, they ran some tests at the hospital and cleared me for high blood pressure, high sugar levels, and all the other general tests that they normally do, something like this. But I knew that I was not all right. Uh, and they took me back home, my sister took me back home. The next day, I went to consult the specialist urologist that I was, uh, uh, well, the, the doctor that I knew and who used to attend on me for this kind of problem. And then he immediately ordered a CT scan. And the doctor actually sat in the monitoring room while the scan was being done. He told me that he was concerned because the scan showed that my left ureter, that's the tube that leads from my kidney to the bladder, was weighted down by something which is not visible through this general CT scan. And so ordered that uh, I should do something which he called a contrast CT scan of the whole abdomen. I didn't really know what that meant except that, uh, well, I had, they had to insert a guide into my uh, kidney area to have a better view of what was happening inside. Well, the scan was done the next day. And the radiologist immediately called me into the monitoring room, which doesn't generally happen. He called me into the monitoring room, and his face was grim. He showed me the images on the monitor and said that my ureter was weighed down by what he called a dense mass in my bladder. He showed me the images and all the technicians around were also concerned. They looked really uh, well. They, they, they were wondering what would happen to me. So my immediate thought when I heard the serious news was cancer. And I, I, was, I was really, really feeling very worried, although I knew I shouldn't be worried when I'm a child of God and that Jesus is in my life 
but still, as a human being, when you hear that this huge thing, you know, something like cancer may be affecting me, I was really worried. But I also thought my children and my grandchildren who aren't here in Sri Lanka will be there. They live in Australia, and I was wondering whether I'll see them again. Then I was thinking of my family, and also something else that concerned me was that I was thinking of my work that I wouldn't be able to do because without this work, I would not even be able to pay for the surgery and the hospitalization that would be required. So many thoughts ran through my mind. But even with all these negative thoughts, I committed this great matter to Jesus, who had come true to me, come true for me in many other situations before. And I knew that he is the only one who could help me in this situation. There was nobody else. And I prayed. But you may not believe me when I tell you that even under what appeared to be a very, very serious condition, Jesus gave me the ability to stay calm. My family began praying for me, and they got their prayer chains activated, and all the friends and the you know, cell groups, they were all praying for me, and they were asking God, they were asking Jesus to heal me of this. Well, two days later, we picked up the report, which uh, it was done by another radiologist, and I took it to my doctor, and we were anxiously waiting for the verdict. The doctor had a look at the images and the report, and he looked at me and said, there's no problem. Everything is clear. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, but I told him, I was told that there is a dense mass in my bladder, and I saw it as well. But then the doctor just dismissed it and said, well, they must have made a mistake. But I am absolutely convinced that there was no mistake because the radiologist and the technician were sure that there was this dense mass in my bladder and I saw it as well in my layman's eyes. I was able to see it because he explained it. He showed me the picture and he explained what it was. And I can tell you that Jesus worked a wonderful miracle that day. And there was nothing, there was absolutely nothing in that scan or in that report to show that there was a dense mass in my blood. And I just thank and praise him because he has come true for me in every single situation that I've faced. And I can tell you, there have been many, many situations. So I just thank and praise him and I just don't have enough words to thank him for who he is to me and what he does for me in every situation. Well, a few years ago, uh, I experienced another serious condition, this time with a stone in my left kidney and a very serious infection in my ureter. I was hospitalized and within a day I was unconscious. I was in the ICU, I was rushed to the ICU and I was connected to a ventilator which is a life support system. And the doctors had given me a life expectancy of just 24 hours. In addition, they said that I would lose my voice completely as a result of a tube being inserted through my throat. Well, I regained consciousness after four days, because everyone around me was praying, my family, my church family, my friends, because of the doctor's verdict once again. The doctor said, well, we can't guarantee that she's going to survive more than 24 hours, because the situation is really critical. And my children uh, were abroad, they were summoned to my bedside, they were by my side, and I was still unconscious. But as always, Jesus hears our prayers, even if I was not conscious, and I was not able to pray for myself. My family and everyone around me was praying, and Jesus heard those prayers, and Jesus came through once again. These are not just 
word and I'm just tell you exactly what I have experienced in my life. And he has done every single time. So, uh, again, that, it was only a miracle that actually brought me back to life because I was at death's door, virtually dead. I was unconscious, but Jesus brought me back to life. And then, of course, there have been several other instances when he has been there for me. I know that Jesus has come through for me in every storm I face, and he's worked so many miracles in my life. Some years ago, during the more radical days of one of our present, now a mainstream political parties, several of my TV colleagues were killed. And as a TV presenter, I was also on the hit list. I've seen a number of death threats, and they even visited my home with a final warning. And then they followed me on a near fatal day, which I thought was going to be my last. But I know that Jesus once again intervened that day and miraculously rescued me. He has worked so many miracles in my life, in every area and in every situation I have faced. I've been in a place where my finances were down to rock bottom. So much so that my car was going to be repossessed by the finance company. But from that point, she has brought me to a place that is unimaginable. That is Jesus. And he can do that for anyone here tonight. Yes, so he has transformed me. I used to be someone who was into so much sin so much, I was, I was in a, well, it was a, an awful pit where I had actually found myself, not only, not because of anything anyone else has done, but it was just through my own seeking that I went there. But Jesus loved me so much, and he still loves me so much. He came to that point and picked me up from that dirt, from that mire, the rock that I was in and he brought me back and he transformed me. I used to be someone who was so arrogant who used to think that, you know, everything that I did is my own. I, I had all the talent. I, I achieved everything that I did and I thought that all that was my own. But now I know that I everything that I possess, everything in my life, everything that I stole is Jesus and nobody else. So I just want to say thank you to my Lord and praise Him. And I'd like to sing the song, which is actually a gospel classic. And it also speaks of uh, my story. Uh, my story, which is actually, He's brought me through many dangers, toils and snares, and I have already come out of it. And His grace is what has brought me here. And I know that His grace undoubtedly will lead me home. So I'd like to sing this song very specially with a thank you to Jesus. And I hope that you can join me sometime during the song and sing along. <laughs> 